Hey everyone, I'm Will England with the CCWSA Environmental Affairs Department. I'm here to talk to you today about uh, about toilets in particular. I've got a, a nice book here to read to you uh, by the author David McKay. And uh, But first, before I get started with the book, I'd like to for you that are watching this video to make a, a hypothesis. You know, a hypothesis in science is something, it's an educated guess uh, about what may happen next. So our hypothesis today is going to consist of, I've got three different things of water here, and uh, we're going to put different things in the water and see which one is biodegradable. So biodegradable means it'll break down naturally. Uh, and we want to put things that are biodegradable in our toilets. So the first thing for our experiment that I've got is a flushable wipe. So we're going to go ahead and put our flushable wipe in the water. Next, I've got some toilet paper. Put that down there. And a toy car. So go ahead and make your, your hypothesis about which one's going to break down during the time that we take to read this story. All right. <clears throat> the title of this book is Toilet, How It Works, and it's written by David Mc McKay. Let's get started. Everyone knows what a toilet is for. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Goodbye, old friend. A spring garden. A toilet's most important job is to remove the waste from our body's make. Tiny creatures called bacteria live in the waste. Bacteria produce useful nutrients, but if they get on our hands or back inside our bodies, they can make us sick. With the push of a button or the press of a handle, the toilet sends our waste on its way. Clever toilet. But where does the waste and what is the waste and where does it come from? Everything we eat and drink passes through a long tube called the intestines. These are the intestines right here. Anything useful is absorbed into our blood vessels and sent to the liver for processing. Everything left over is waste. Solid waste collect, collects at the end of our intestines. Liquid waste is produced by the kidneys and stored in the bladder. There's the bladder. A few times a day, your body reminds you to get rid of waste. You head for the bathroom, water closet, WC, girls room, boys room, men's room, or ladies room, wherever the toilet is hiding. Most toilets have two containers of water. The one on top with a handle or button is called a tank. The part you sit in is called the bowl. Do not sit on the tank. Once you have finished, the tank holds two most. Uh, once you have finished your flush, the tank holds almost two gallons of water. When you push the handle down, a chain inside the tank pulls up the stopper. Whoosh! All the water rushes into the bowl, and all the waste disappears. Pretty impressive, don't you think? And keep your eye out for that plastic float in the tank. There's the float. The sudden rush of water from the tank forces the waste into a specially shaped pipe at the bottom of the bowl. This pipe is called a siphon. It starts with a steep climb. So there's the bowl and there's the siphon. As soon as the, uh, the wastewater reaches the top of the pipe, it spills down the other side. Now gravity takes over. Gravity pulls the waste down the pipe. It helps the weight of the air that's pushing down in the bowl. Or it gets help from the weight of the air pushing down into the bowl. When the tank is empty, the stopper closes. It's time for a refill. As the stopper pulls down on the lever, fresh water enters into the tank. Slowly the water rises. Here's the float. It's going to rise to the water level. When the float stops pulling on the lever, the water shuts off. The tank is full. The toilet bowl has filled up too. All the wastewater from the bathroom, washing machine, kitchen, and hot tub leaves your house through a soil pipe. If you live where the house, 
where the houses are far apart, the pipe may lead to a septic tank buried in the yard. This is a picture of a septic tank. As the wastewater enters the septic tank, it separates into layers. Oil and grease called scum floats to the top of the dirty water up here. Heavier stuff sinks to the bottom. Bacteria continues to digest the waste. So here's the heavy stuff at the bottom and the dirty water and the scum that's on the top. Every time the wastewater flows down into the septic tank, it pushes up the water level. This sends some of the water out the other side. So here's it coming out the other side. Water leaves the tank, seeps into the, seeps into the surrounding soil through perforated pipes. This water contains nutrients produced by the hungry bacteria. See the happy green grass? And this is called fill lines. Waste on the bottom just sits there. Every few years, someone has to remove the dark, smelly gunk from the bottom of the septic tank. And here's a truck pumping the septic tank. And it's going to carry it to a wastewater plant. If you live in a crowded place, there is no room for septic tanks. You will need a sewer system. In a big city, there are thousands of miles of pipes and millions, even billions, of gallons of wastewater. All the toilets and sinks and showers and washing machines are connected to soil pipes in the buildings. All the soil pipes are connected to large sewer pipes buried deep under the road. The largest sewer pipe leads to a wastewater treatment plant. The wastewater flows through metal screens that captures trash. Sand and gravel are removed next. Now the wastewater is pumped into a big round tank called a clarifier. Scum is skimmed off the top. So here's the wastewater coming in and the metal screens. That's removing the trash. And then the sand and gravel, it settles at the bottom of the tank and the clear water goes over into the next stage. And this is the picture of the clarifier with a skimmer that's skimming off the scum. Solids are collected in a pit called a sump. Solids and scum make up sludge. Sludge goes off in one direction, the dirty water sent off in another. Sludge is pumped into an enclosed tank called a digester. It is mixed and heated and mixed some more. Once again, the busy bacteria digest the waste and produce nutrients. So in this particular tank, this is called an anaerobic digester and it produces methane. So here's the methane coming out and the digester and everything mixing within the anaerobic digester. They also produce a gas called methane. Methane can be used to heat the treatment plants, buildings, or generate electricity. When the digested sludge is ready, it is piped to a press where all the water is squeezed out. This is how solid, this solid is now trucked off to a farm for fertilizing soil. So here's the press and it's squeezing out all the water, all the liquid from the press cake, and then it's going to a farm. The dirty water goes into a tank called an aeration tank. The water is checked often to make sure there's enough bacteria. Oxygen bubbles are helped to, are added to help the bacteria. So here's the water or the oxygen that's coming up from the bottom is helping the bacteria. Then it's off to the second clarifier tank. Any leftover scum is removed as clumps of bacteria drop into the sump. Some of these bacteria are returned to the aeration tank for another meal. Yum! The wastewater never stops coming, so the plant can never stop working. Each tank has a twin for backup, just in case. In the last tank, chlorine is added to water to kill off any dangerous bacteria. Finally, the water is clean enough to join the river. Some of the clean water will evaporate and form clouds. Some of these clouds will produce rain. Some of the rain will end up in the reservoirs as drinking water. Now you know why we go to all the trouble. And one thing the book doesn't mention, it talks about chlorine, but we have to dechlorinate the water also before we return it into the environment. So that's the end of the book, toilet how it works. I recommend to check this out at your local library if you
you haven't already uh, or purchased it. I know Amazon has it on sale and several other book providers. All right, let's get back to our experiment. So this is our flushable wipe. It doesn't look like it's changed at all. Let's look at this one. This is our toilet paper. It looks like it's starting to break down. You can just rub it and it just falls right apart in your hand. And the toy car, it hasn't changed at all. So one thing I want you to take away from this, uh, flushable wipes are not biodegradable and neither are cars. So the word flushable implies that you can flush it down the toilet. And both, of, well all three things here can be flushed down the toilet but they don't belong in a toilet. Uh, and one thing I want you to remember is there's only three things that need to be in a toilet. The three P's is what we call them. One of those is P. Here's our P. The next is poop. And lastly, is paper and this is only talking about toilet paper so I'll put that in there <clears throat> your toilet's not a trash can and it shouldn't be treated as such so remember just the three things that go in your toilet pee poop and paper or toilet paper in particular um, and as I said I recommend this book uh, by David McKay it's an excellent book that talks about the wastewater process and how water leaves your home, how septic tanks work. Uh, so I recommend you checking that out. And thank you for your time. Have a great day.